This is the continuation of the standard for portfolio management, chapter 6. Portfolio stakeholder engagement. Organizational strategy defined the path of an organizational towards achieving its vision. Portfolio management is the means by which an organization implement a defined strategy by directing the limited resources of the organization to the portfolio components that most support the strategy realization. The implementations of an organizational strategy is also important for other organizations or individual dealing with the organization. Portfolio stakeholder are the individual organizations or group that can affect, may be affected. may affect by or perceive themselves to be affected by a, a decision, activity, or outcomes of a portfolio. In addition, include individual organizations or group that could affect the organization's ability to achieve its objectives, positively or negatively, should also be treated as a stakeholder. A large number of individuals and groups could be considered stakeholders being somehow directly or indirectly affected by portfolio activities. When it comes to engaging and communicating with them, the question is on whom to focus and how to con condense the long list of potential stakeholders. The stakeholder list at the portfolio level is significantly different from the list at the portfolio components level. The difference is not only related to the stakeholder level. Example, frequently a portfolio level stakeholder will be at the higher management level, but is also related to the level of interest of the involved stakeholder. Portfolio stakeholder engage deal primarily with delivering strategies and allocating resources, whereas program deals primarily with benefits, managing and project deals with delivering scope in terms of quality, time, and cost. This different interest means that different rules will be considered for the stakeholder of the portfolio versus the stakeholder of a components. An integral part of stakeholder engagement is portfolio communication management, which includes developing a portfolio communication management plan and managing the disseminations of portfolio information. The communication strategy focus on generating and or obtaining all relevant data and on satisfying the most important information needs of the stakeholder so that effective portfolio decisions are made and organizational objectives are met. Transparency may be communication strategy to mitigate the risk and adequately communication. Transparency with priorities and status provides credibility for the portfolio manager enables good relationship with the stakeholders and helps reduce the chance of resources working on effort that are not aligned with the organizational strategy and objectives. The following major sections are address, overview, guiding principles, 6.1 overview, 6.2 guiding principles, 6.3 definitions and identifications of portfolio stakeholder, 6.4 Analysis of Portfolio Stakeholder 6.5 Stakeholder Engagement Planning 6.6 Identifying Communication Management Approach 6.7 Manage Portfolio Communication 6.1 Overview Stakeholder Engagement includes practical implementation topics such as working with a portfolio stakeholder to maximize portfolio and organizational performance a portfolio manager communicates frequently with the stakeholder using moods and techniques appropriate for the context. The portfolio manager facilitates communication among stakeholders to negotiate agreement and make portfolio decision. Three main stakeholder groups can be identified as affected by the portfolio execution. Executive leader and manager of an organization internal or external organizations and individual working for the portfolio components, internal or external users and customers for the portfolio components. 
this stakeholder needs access to the resources or the organizations to perform and achieve their given objectives every time portfolio management result in the shifting of resources from one potential components to another. The key interest of executive leader and managers are affected internal or external organizations and individuals working for the portfolio components. This stakeholder have a strong personal interest connected to the funding and directions of the relative components. The portfolio heavily influence decision to start and continue the works on these components. Internal or external users and customers of the portfolio components, these stakeholder individuals as well as organizations have both implicitly, implicitly and explicitly documented requirements connected with the portfolio components. The prioritizations of the components in the portfolio affect the satisfactions of this expectation. Together with these main stakeholder groups, many other stakeholders can be affected by the portfolio, including process owner, supplier, individuals responsible for governance, shareholder, government, and even the public at large. The successful executions of the portfolio and its components, which has a strong impact on the interest of this stakeholder, is also heavily influenced by them. Portfolio stakeholder engagement is concerned with all forms of communication directed to inform, influence, and enable stakeholder at the portfolio level. Engaging stakeholder is not the end objectives of the activities and approach described in this section. Rather, it is a means by which the portfolio manager support the achievements of excellence in executing defined strategies which implies enable transparency, responsibility, accountability, and fairness, ensuring that investment in portfolio components are aligned with the organization's strategy and governance practices, and obtain and maintaining the sponsorship and engagement of senior management and key stakeholder. Effective portfolio stakeholder engagement and communication management will foster a culture that embrace change and risk while supporting the organizations in navigating complexity to enable successful outcomes, refer to navigating complexity, a practice guide 5. Will engage the stakeholder have a clear understanding of the portfolio's value and direction. They are transparently informed regarding the impact of the portfolio on other interests and will have as much as opportunity as possible to align this interest with the interest of the portfolio, stakeholders with opposing interest are, are enabled to reconcile their expectations in light with the higher value of strategy realization. The key iterative steps of stakeholder engagement and communication includes the following aspect, which will be discussed further a subsequent section. Stakeholder identification and analysis, identifying and analyzing the stakeholder who operates the strategic level and then setting plans for engagement. Stakeholder engagement plan outlining the portfolio management principles, processes, and activities to engage the stakeholder. Stakeholder engagement activities providing timely assessment of portfolio component selection, prioritization, and performance, as well as early identifications of portfolio level issues and risk. The management of portfolio communication approach is described in section 6.6. .6. Portfolio communication facilitates a two-way effective dialogue between effect affected internal and external stakeholder individuals or group, including executive managers, operation managers, governing bodies, sponsor, project, program of subsidiary portfolio managers, supplier and external resource providers, regulatory bodies, and others. In order to develop the portfolio communication management plan, stakeholder identification and analysis are necessarily, in addition to the determinations and communication requirements. In planning, portfolio communications and portfolio management plan may identify some of the primarily stakeholder, such as executive managers and sponsors, who are accountable 
for the success of the portfolio. Planning may uncover additional stakeholder that requires or may benefits from the knowledge of the portfolio progress, performance, and changes. These additional discoveries are reflected as updates to the portfolio management plan as comprehensive list of the stakeholder is compiled. It is important to determine the stakeholders' information needs and their prepared mode of communication. Developing a strong communication management plan requires input from a variety of other portfolio management processes, such as a performance and risk management. Portfolio communication recognizes broad and varied stakeholders from executive management to individual performing, the basic task, and third parties. The information needs of portfolio stakeholders are much more varied than the program project level communication, primarily because of the breadth and variety of the stakeholder. Transparency in planning portfolio management reporting is important for discovering early of elements are missing and for managing risk as a result of insufficient or inconsistent communication. Transparent communication is also valuable when planning for the optimal utilization of resources. Table 6 does one list the various stakeholder rules under typical level of interest in the portfolio as guide to their potential communication requirements. Table 6.1 Stakeholder Interest Table composed of stakeholder group, stakeholder rules, stakeholder interest, stakeholder expectation. Number one, portfolio is sponsor. Stakeholder rules provide funding, provide resources, provide high-level scoping. Stakeholder interest benefits the outcomes that meet the organization's goal. Stakeholder expectation to be informed regularly of the portfolio return on investment, key portfolio milestone, risk, cost, and schedule. Portfolio governance. Stakeholder rules oversees the portfolio, sets priorities, manage the spending, report progress, manage timely delivery of the benefits. Stakeholder interest, portfolio performance, governance decision, change decision, concern of the sponsor and governing body. Stakeholder expectation, to be the most knowledgeable party of portfolio progress against goal to be aware of all development of consequence. Stakeholder group, PMO. PMO, the stakeholder rules is ensure that portfolio manager, management best practices are being followed. Stakeholder interest, project progress, lesson learned, developing PMO materials for future use. Stakeholder expectation to receive notifications of all portfolio changes and portfolio needs. A stakeholder group, contract management team, vendor or legal. A stakeholder rules, ensure that funding is intact. Manage the contract, ensures efficient availability of contractor staff. A stakeholder interest, financial standing, project progress, contract impact and changes. A stakeholder expectation to be made aware of progress against contractual deliverables. To be made aware of any changes to the contract, including increased resource requirements. A stakeholder group portfolio components team. A stakeholder rules report progress and completions of components. A stakeholder interest portfolio changes, portfolio risk and issue. A stakeholder expectation to receive notifications of all portfolio chains risk and issue. Stakeholder group, portfolio manager. Stakeholder rule, establish and implement portfolio management, ensure proper communication and coordination among components, design and improve appropriate processes, adjust portfolio components, communicates with the portfolio governing body. Stakeholder interest, for the portfolio manager, alignment with the portfolio with strategic goal, creating value for the organization through balanced portfolio components, 
effective communication between portfolio stakeholder and components, managers, efficient use of portfolio resources. A stakeholder expectation to be fully informed of organizational strategic goal and objective, to be provided with sufficient resource for portfolio components, to be empowered to, to communicate with all portfolio stakeholders. Stakeholder group, external stakeholder, stakeholder rules, stay informed of the funding and directions of the portfolio and its components, execute work decision based on the progress of respective components, stakeholder interest for external stakeholder, effect of portfolio and components, execution on the requirements and interest, stakeholder expectation for ex external stakeholder, full and open communication on portfolio and components, executions and progress, appropriate considerations of their interest and concern in the implementations of the portfolio and components. So this is the table six, this one is a stakeholder interest table composed of stakeholder groups, stakeholder rules, stakeholder interest, stakeholder expectation. The stakeholder groups are portfolio sponsor, portfolio governance, PMO, contract management team, vendor legal, portfolio components team, portfolio manager, and external stakeholder. 6.2 guiding principles because all processes and activities in portfolio management involve some sort of communication. It could be stated that stakeholder engagement synergize with the other performance management domain of this standard. The focus of this section is less on the regular exchange of information that is directly connected to the performance of portfolio management functions and, and more on the conscious activity of engaging portfolio stakeholder through two-way communication and interaction. Although all the principles outlined in section 1.7 are relevant for portfolio stakeholder engagement and for communication management, the following principles are especially important in providing guidance to the approach and activities described in this section. Achieve, achieve excellence in strategic execution, enable transparency, responsibility, accountability, sustainability, and fairness. Ensure that investment in portfolio components are aligned with the organization's strategy and governance practices. Obtain and maintain the sponsorship and engagement of senior management and key stakeholder. Foster a culture that em embrace change and risk and navigate complexity to enable successful outcomes. 6.3 Definitions and Identification of Portfolio Stakeholder 6.3 Definitions and Identifications of Portfolio Stakeholder 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 are ambiguous across all aspects of portfolio program and project management. Therefore, there is a great similarity in identifying and analyzing stakeholder across various domains. What distinguish portfolio stakeholder identification and analysis from program or project stakeholder engagement. Although portfolio management activities are useful in program management and even in project management portfolio, stakeholders engagement is essentially a strategic activity. Portfolio stakeholder engagement primarily deals with a stakeholder that operates on a strategic level more so than those that operate directly at a program or project level. For example, depending on the project, the project staff may not even be aware of the stakeholder who are critical to the ongoing operations and the futures of the organization. It may also be that there are agreements and relationships at the strategic level that needs to be honored in components, program, and project. This section concentrates on identifying the stakeholders who operate at the strategic level and then setting the plans for engagement. 
These are the policies and procedures of which all programs and project stakeholders within the scope of the portfolio should be appropriately cognizant. At this level, stakeholder includes both key individuals as well as entitles. In addition to acting on the strategic level, the key focus of portfolio stakeholder is the delivery of strategy, specifically the strategic initiative that have been allocated to the portfolio. It is critical that portfolio stakeholder identification and analysis activities do not inhibit or constrain the interactions with program and project more than necessary. Therefore, the focus is on the guidance and enablement rather than constraint throughout the letter may occur because of agreement that are in place among stakeholders that should be taken into account. The strategic level and portfolio manager has access to information that may not be available at lower levels in the organization. The portfolio managers play a key role in ensuring the alignment of current and future project with the organizational strategy and may possess knowledge of how organizational capability will develop and what competence of capabilities will become available to program and project. Because of the potentially sensitive nature of portfolio information, especially related to competitive and proprietary information generated and available at the highest level of organization, precautions are usually established and enforced to limit access to certain stakeholders those who might seek to potentially negatively impact an organization's performance and strategic objectives, as well as those who would be negatively disposed to priority decision. This group of stakeholders could include competitors, suppliers, or customers. These letters concern should be appropriately addressed within the governance guidelines and organizational and portfolio level. 6.3.1 Categorizations of Stakeholder The existence of portfolio management in the organization implies that there are many programs or projects contemplated or in executions with the organizations by nature in the large organizations operates in the environment that includes actual and potential suppliers customers, competitors, regulators, and other interested parties in addition to the internal stakeholders of the organization. By advising taxonomy and ordered arrangements of the group or categories, the task of categorizing strategic stakeholder can be made easier. The common language that is developed improve and interactions among portfolio components and help reduce conflict. For example, when there are many programs or projects in the portfolio, there had been competition for scarce resources. Standardized terminology can make it easier to resolve this issue. It can also help to establish list of external stakeholders with whom pre-arrangement can be made. Example, approved vendor list. This and other common activities can reduce portfolio components, start up time, and improve communications among components, managers, and stakeholders. Using the organization strategy for guidance, portfolio managers can identify types of stakeholder and start identifying prepared parties with whom to establish that and maintain relationship and maintain those relationships to further program and project. Note also that strategy is relative terms that depends on domain in which the portfolio exists. For example, it might be in international or national level. Example, the United Nations or government, organizational level, or even at a business unit or lower level. Because the marketplace is dynamic, Categorizing stakeholder needs to be an ongoing activity for as long as a portfolio exists. Examples of categories of stakeholder includes senior executive, strategic alliances, contractors, 
regulatory bodies, competitors, interest and action groups, customer segment, and other parties that would operate at the portfolio level. These stakeholders are mainly organization, but they could also include a specific highly influential individual. 6.3.2 Identifying Stakeholder Portfolio Management Guides and Direct and Overall Portfolio and its Components Program Management may do this also as well as the stairs, but it is overall project management to execute and it is important that portfolio management does not overstep its responsibility. This applies to stakeholder engagement as well. It is important that the portfolio stakeholder engagement is understood and an outline of the scope of operation as developed as suggested previously. Portfolio stakeholder engagement tend to focus at the strategic level and not so much to the tactical level. However, suggestions may be offered and stipulations may be made when necessarily in order to avoid placing unnecessary constraints on programs and projects. 6.4 Analysis of Portfolio Stakeholder The identification of stakeholders is an ongoing process periodically. A rough cut analysis should be performed to identify whether a stakeholder may be conveniently grouped. However, it is important to remember that in every group, there are key members who need to handle separately and individual. In order to identify the key concern or perspective of the stakeholder, it may be useful to express those concerns as shown in Table 6 does to examples of key stakeholder context is composed of who, concern, and context. So who, owner, architect, engineer, builder, user, community. Okay. Owners. The concern of owners is needs a solution to a problem of, or opportunity, whereas the context of the owner is expressed the need in the strategy. Strategic plan implementation agent, the sponsor. Architect. The concern of architect is Describe owner need, while the context is in an architectural design. Engineer, the concern is implement the solution, uh, design the solution. Context, in specifications, drawings, and models. The builders, the concern of builders is implement the solution, and the context of the builders uh, are virtual process structures and data and physical artifacts which are combined into a program system. User, the concern of user are use the solutions while the context is agent, the solution owner. Community, the concern of community is conceive the benefits of the solution or it's negatively impacted by the solution. While the context of community is an agent, government, and regulatory authorities who are meant to protect their interests. The key functions of the portfolio manager are to interpret the organizational strategy and understand the strategic initiative to the degree that components can be identified, categorized, and evaluated so that they might be combined for the example as a program or run a single project. As indicated in Table 6, does to, every portfolio has a stakeholder who operates at different level and have different interests. Common terms can be used to identify them. Some have a specific interest, while others, example, a regulatory body, may have an overriding interest to ensure that the interests of one stakeholder do not impact others more than necessary. For example, many countries have rules that govern competition, and there are severe penalties for what may be regarded as collusion. It is important to gather information about these rules and includes and include it in the guidance for program and project. Paragraph 6.5 Stakeholder Engagement Planning Stakeholder Engagement Planning is one 
of the key activities of the portfolio manager, the portfolio manager focused on understanding the organizational strategy and translating, aligning the strategy with the operation operations plan in the organization, including communication. There has to be a clear linkage between the components being executed in the operations plan and how those initiatives support the organizational strategy. strategy. Because all strategic plans are renewed and revised regularly, especially in the competitive and ever-changing world market, the portfolio should be reviewed frequently to ensure alignment between the revised strategy and the operational plan initiatives being executed. Therefore, the stakeholder engagement plan should include triggers for communications and further engagement with the stakeholder as the portfolio undergoes review and adjustment to the strategic plan change. 6.6 Identifying Communication Management Approaches In identifying the most effective way to approach communication within the portfolio, many factors should be taken into account. This range from the portfolio governance practices and processes of the organization to the resource available to the portfolio management team and their use within the guidelines of the portfolio roadmap and portfolio management plan. 6.1. Alignment with governance. It is important to ensure that the portfolio communication management plan is aligned with the organization portfolio governance requirements and processes. Portfolio managers should ensure that they have access to this process and if the organization does not have formal documents, then the portfolio team needs to develop and required governance to run the portfolio and have it approved by a sponsor. These principles and objectives should be incorporated into the communication management plan. Senior management defines organizational governance based on the fundamental norms rules and values of the organization which are used as a basis for developing portfolio governance practices including communication management as portfolio governance practice incorporated the government the governance principles of the organization they will down to the portfolio components so as to provide control integrations decision making and general oversight Paragraph 6.6.2, Communication Infrastructure. 6.6.2, Communication Infrastructure. The portfolio includes the list of approved and potential portfolio components as well as the description information of the components such as dependencies, level of effort, points of contract, and other dashboard type information. Communication infrastructure indicates all of the organizational and portfolio management processes, policies, and technologies used to communicate portfolio status. Knowledge of the components of the portfolio may have an effect of the communication approach used for consolidating and standardizing communications and evaluating communication strategy at a portfolio as opposed to the components level. The portfolio list of components is this is critical understanding the full scope of communication needed. The portfolio roadmap helps to understand the structures of the portfolio, identifying interdependencies among the portfolio components and determining how the portfolio components fit together in order to lay out the plan for achieving organizational strategy and objectives clear and time communications of the roadmap and any changes to it is a fundamental part of portfolio communications. The portfolio communication management plan may include information about the interdependencies among the portfolio components that could impact portfolio communication objectives. 6.6.3 6 Portfolio Management Plan the portfolio management plan provides the scope and objectives of the portfolio 
and the initial list of primary internal and, in, and external portfolio, including the governance model. The portfolio management plan is the guiding artifact that establishes portfolio level dependencies and constraints to allow for effective oversight. The portfolio management plan describes the plan approach for identifying, analyzing, selecting, approving, prioritizing, and scheduling the portfolio component and stating priorities. All elements of the portfolio management plan have communication requirements such as rest that need to be communicated with the governing body, the portfolio manager, and the stakeholder chains. In the portfolio management plan, may introduce new stakeholder to, to or new communication requirements. The portfolio communication management plan may be a subsidiary plan for the portfolio management plan, or it may be indicated within the portfolio management plan. The portfolio governance play, plan may also be a subsidiary of the portfolio management plan. 6.6.4 Portfolio Report Portfolio Report includes a variety of the reports such as Portfolio Status or Progress Report, Performance Report, Portfolio Risk Report, Portfolio Dashboard, Spreadsheet, and Summary Report from the overall governance of portfolio components. Portfolio Performance Report can provide information on the total investment in each portfolio components which serves as communication of assessed, assessed portfolio value. Some organizations commonly use with dashboard to provide status information at a glance. The format and content of this report should be defined in the portfolio communication management plan provided with templates, standard forms, processes, and procedures for plan prioritization, uh, portfolio reporting. 6.6.5 portfolio process assets. Portfolio process assets related to the planning Portfolio communication includes, but are not, not are limited to, manager rules and responsibilities, status report, risk profile of risk assessment with key stakeholder and basis, forecast with variance to plan, governance decision, funding decision, resource decision, value assessment and Delegations of sincerity all over the facility. Six point six point six communication governance and interface to components. The successful exercise for portfolio governance is fully dependent on effective communication with all the stakeholder. Careful analysis of the end of the desire of all participants is essential to those that proper information needed may flow in a timely and efficient manner. 6.6.1 Elicitation Technique A portfolio stakeholder and the stakeholder communication requirements change over time. It is important to the portfolio manager to engage with stakeholder to ensure that the portfolio communication management plan is aligned with their needs. This may be achieved through interviews, questionnaire, and surveys. The stakeholder meeting and lesson learn session on the effectiveness of communication. By meeting with the stakeholders, for example, the portfolio manager can review the plan communication to get feedback on the portfolio communication plan. Brainstorming can be helpful in identifying new stakeholder groups that were not previously considered 
And in this meeting, portfolio stakeholder can confirm or recommended changes to the communication requirements Six point six point six point two communication requirements analysis. In communication requirements analysis, the vendor or the tool used to communicate information to the stakeholder with the with a plan of frequency is evaluated to determine whether change should be made or less a of available communication method is started to ev evaluate alternative and ensure that the optimal vehicle is being used to meet stakeholder needs. Review and conduct to identify any redundant communication. Some re redundancy is intentional so that multiple types of rece rec uh, recipients are rich and recipient various preference for receiving information are met. Choices may need to be made by identify which documents is primarily with is secondary and which should be discontinued. A communication metric may be used for capturing and analyze uh, and recording the results of the analysis. Table 6 dust 3 is an example of communication metric. The communication metric is uh, foundational to building and communication mass, uh, management plan. Table 6 does three example communication metric is composed of communication areas, frequency, your child, intended recipient, and communication vehicles. Table 6 does three examples of communication matrix is composed of communication area, frequency, intended recipient, and communication vehicles. Communication areas composed of portfolio governance, portfolio dashboard, portfolio performance report, key risk and issue update, resource utilization. With corresponding frequency and intended recipient and communication vehicles. Communication area, portfolio governance decision, frequency quarterly and monthly, intended recipient project sponsor. Portfolio Manager, PMO, Contracting Officer. Communication Vehicles, Quarterly and Monthly Report on Internal Portal. Portfolio Dashboard. Frequency of Weekly and Monthly. Intended Recipient, Project Sponsor, Portfolio Manager and PMO. Communication vehicles, governance meeting, emails, distribution, portfolio, dashboard on internal portal. Portfolio performance report. Frequency of weekly and monthly. Intended recipient, portfolio sponsor, PMO, portfolio stakeholder, functional managers. Communication vehicles, governance meetings, status report with emails. Distribution newsletters, blogs, portfolio dashboard on internal portal. Communication areas, key risk and issue update. Frequency of weekly and monthly. Intended recipient, portfolio sponsor, portfolio stakeholder, functional managers, and the communication vehicles, governance meeting, status reports, and email distribution. The last is resource utilization, frequency of weekly and monthly, intended recipient of project team, project team members and SMEs, whereas the communication vehicles of resource utilization is a governance, meetings, status reports with email distribution, portfolio dashboard on internal portal. To complete a portfolio communication requirements, Analysis and assessments of the organization culture is helped to ensure that the portfolio communication management plan is suitable 
for the organization if the organization is generally comfortable with technology portals may be planned more extensively as a primary vehicles for reporting information if the organization is not comfortable with technology it may prepare paper reports and emails update for organizational culture can be reflected in the metrics Paragraph 6.7, Manage Portfolio Communication. In communication, in communicating with portfolio stakeholders, it is important that both agreed upon governance and stakeholder communication requirements are constantly taken into consideration. This means that any changes to the portfolio content governance or roadmap are fed through the stakeholders and the communication metrics updated accordingly. During portfolio management plan execution, new communication or information management needs and method may be determined. These updates are included in the content of the portfolio management plan or the subsidiary portfolio communication management plan. Chapter 7, Portfolio Value Management Portfolio Value Management ensures that Investment in the portfolio delivers the required return as defined in the organizational strategy, which is in expressions of the stakeholder direction in defining portfolio components such as projects and programs. The following major sections are addressed. 7.1 Overview 7.2 Guiding Principles 7.3 What is a Value Management 7.4 Components of Value Management 7.5 Negotiating Expected Value 7.6 Maximizing Value 7.7 Assuring Value 7.8 Real Realizing Value 7.9 Measuring Value 7.10 Reporting Value 7.1 Overview This section presents the Portfolio Management Performance Domain and discusses appropriate concepts such as Maximizing Value Assurance value and realizing value. 7.1 Overview. Mm. This section presents the portfolio value management performance domain and discusses appropriate concepts such as maximizing value, assuring value, and realize, realizing value. 7.1 Guiding Principles. Seven point two guiding principles. All portfolio are managed to enhance and maintain the value of organization, whether that value is tangible or intangible. In order, in order for value to be maximized, the organization should adhere to a set of principles to successfully guide it at the portfolio level. All the principles outlined in section 1.7 are important for value management. However, the following are especially applicable as they directly impact the value of organization. Ensure that investment in portfolio components are aligned with the organization's strategy and governance practices. And balance the portfolio value against overall risk. The objective of value management is independent of the nature of the organization, whether the organization is a private company or the governmental agency defining the organization's value objectives, drives its strategy, impacting its governance practices and strategic management processes, and how it approaches risk. Paragraph 7.3, what is the value management? A search for a definitions of a value offers perspective from a number of domain, including mathematics, ethics, economics, and management. However, they essentially all resolve around the idea that value is an indicator of the effect of entity or offering can deliver. That effect can be seen in the numbers of way, for example, as increase revenue, increase profit, or reduce risk value is contextual 
The effect that the organization seek to command are driven by the purpose of the organization and its worldview, which is reflected in its strategy. The value of an entity or offering increase the more impactful it is and the more relevant to the organization's strategy, the impact is. An entity or offering is high in value where it is significant impact on an organization's environment and where that impact is relevant to the organization's strategy. Not all forms of value are universally relevant. Public sector bodies may seek reduce cost and increase citizen satisfactor, satisfactions and therefore value the measures that lead to that private sector's organizations may value measures that needs to increase revenue and margin while in non-governmental organizations NGO, those measures that best enhance output related to mission may be most valued. Significance can also be undermined by redundancy when an aid open aid programs is shaping food into disaster area. The food has value perhaps measure in terms of the number of survivors who did not experience starvation over a period of time. If food is shipped in faster than it can be distributed and the excess will perish before it can be consumed, then the excess stock has no value in the context of the particular program because it will not contribute any impact. For value to be recognized, metrics are required. Define units of measurement and method of making the measurement should exist and be relevant to the organization and the effect to be commanded, see section 7.9, for more information on measurement. Metrics related to value may attach to tangible and intangible output or effect just as value may be tangible or intangible. Tangible value can be directly measure. It includes things such as skills uplift, resource capacity, market share, and client satisfaction. Economic value is a particular case of tangible value and where an economic value can assign would typically be a key considerations for a portfolio manager. Improvement in economic value can be realized by improving productivity possible by the substitutions of capital for labor, labor or by reducing the investment in input resources such as human capital, financial assets, and intellectual capital and increasing the volume of activity without necessarily increasing productivity. Intangible value cannot be directly measured through proxy measures will be possible. Intangible value includes things such as brand awareness, organization's reputation, risk exposure, compliance and societal value. Measurement of value is not necessarily straightforward, particularly given that organizations operate in environment they cannot control and typically pursue multiple strategies to the same end. Through the value of the code, organizations based on its market capitalization may be directly and transparently measured. Measuring the value based on consumer perceptions of the brand will likely require an indirect approach. A hotel chain may use a loyalty program to drive profit but may have another program with the same aim and may choose to try to isolate measurement of the impact of the loyalty program by measuring things such as membership count, net promoter, score per member, and the profit per member. A food aid program in a disaster area seek to preserve life, but there may be other threats to life besides starvation, including disease and arm arm conflict, the aid agency may seek a more nouns measurement beyond number of surviving versus original population count, perhaps focusing on the numbers of people being treated 
for malnutrition or other afflictions. Paragraph 7.4, Components of Value Management. There are numbers of key activities required for effective portfolio value management in the context of length between the portfolio's effect on the environment, the organization's purpose, and the development strategy leading to the creations of the portfolio or its reshaping. To effectively manage value, the portfolio manager, manager should negotiate expected value, maximize return, realize value, measure performance, and report value, negotiate expected value, negotiate the value to be created by the portfolio considered at two level against the aim of the organizational strategy for the portfolio as a whole and within the portfolio where each of its candidate components is assessed against the value frameworks negotiated for the portfolio maximize return maximize the return for the investment in the portfolio plan and enact an approach to deliver each components at the lowest safe economic cost without negative impact to the required effect and value this includes modeling and evaluating various approaches to satisfy the aim of the portfolio using techniques such as portfolio efficient frontier and other applicable risk management tools and techniques. Realize value. Ensure that the value required to be realized by the investment in the portfolio is achieved. The key is recognizing that the environment onto which the component will deliver its output is actively conditioned to exploit those output in pursuit of the required value. Measure performance. Measure the performance achieved by the output generated by the components in the portfolio. For instance, in support of balance scorecard, the portfolio manager should gather the agreed upon metrics. Report value. Report the value achieved based on the metrics. This is a political act on the value achieved consists of a narrative related achievement in light of applicable risk, the impact of shift in the environment and possible change in organization purpose or worldview to achieve effective portfolio management value. The portfolio manager needs to create a model of the portfolio's requirements influencing factors and tolerance that will drive portfolio components towards realizations of the value target in figure 7-1. Illustrate these points in the context of the link between the portfolio effect on the environment, the organization's purpose, and the development of strategy leading to the creations of the portfolio or its reshaping. Figure 7 does one key activities in portfolio value management, enterprise purpose, and worldview is composed of developed strategy and portfolio environment where there is an report value and measure performance and develop strategy is composed of negative expected value maximize return and realize value manage portfolio assure value safeguard value this is portfolio environment risk portfolio expected value Portfolio required value, effective measured of value, portfolio expected value. So this is the seven, that's one key activities in portfolio value management. There are two primary feedback loops from the portfolio to the strategy driving it. The first is the one that negotiates the expected portfolio value given the required value resulting from strategy development, assigned budget, enterprise environmental factor external and internal risk and organizational risk appetite the second feedback loops up more slowly taking measurement of performance and achieve value and combining those with environmental observation and the organization's purpose and worldview to shape a strategy the second feedback loops is the more impactful of the two
underpin, underpinning all of the activities discussed in this section are A, the need to assure value at the portfolio level, establishing the appro approaches to be followed by the components and tracking the implementations of those approaches and their impact, and B, the need of safeguard value. Value is safeguarded by effective management of the risk in the portfolio environment, recognizing that opportunity management is encompassed with risk management. 7.5. Negotiating expected value. The portfolio manager negotiates the expected value to be achieved by the portfolio against the required value. In order to ensure that the immediate goal developed by the strategy do not waste the organizations at risk of significant and their achievement as part of negotiating, the portfolio manager removes redundant value and align expectations and risk appetite. The negotiation requires the portfolio manager to act as bridge between the components owner and the strategy functions within the organization. The strategy is also informed by strategic investment choice. Investment choice relates to the alignment of the portfolio. This analysis focus on the new and changing strategic objectives and goals and indicates where there is a gaps in investment within the portfolio as a whole. Gaps may pose a risk of the portfolio. Assessment approach include but are not limited to the following. Assessment approach includes but are not limited to the following. Trade-off analysis, market payoff variability, budget variability, performance variability, market requirements variability, time to market variability. Trade-off analysis determines the effect of changing one or more factor for the portfolio. Market payoff variability. Focus on pricing and sales forecast and depends on the numbers of marketing factor whereby the effect of changing one or more of these factors may affect the portfolio itself or the portfolio strategy. Budget variability determines the effect of changing the portfolio. Performance variability analyzes the performance of the portfolio. Market requirements variability analyzes change in market requirements in relation to the portfolio. Time to market variability determines the effect of portfolio velocity. There are the three concepts that, con that support the negotiation. Number one, value management frameworks. Number two, evidence-based value statement and efficient frontier. Value management frameworks is a framework that provides a baseline for defining the target value for its components. Evidence-based value statement. Each portfolio component should generate a business case that has evidence based whether the tangible or intangible value statement about the value required, including timing, realization, dependencies, and accountabilities. Efficient frontier, a modeling approach that gives decision makers the analytical tools to optimize portfolio given resource constraint. Paragraph 7.6, maximizing value. The return of investment ROI of the portfolio measures the value achieved for the input cost given that the required value has already been negotiated. The portfolio manager should aim to realize the value required from the portfolio at the lowest safe economic cost. The portfolio manager has a number of tools available to achieve this, including risk appetite related to input and output quality assigned to components, design guidance applied to components to prevent over specifications of solution element, applications of solution constraint to force synergy between the components in the portfolio or between components in the portfolio and components in other portfolio requirements on individual components to exercise effective financial management. Exercise of effective financial management 
at the portfolio level and use of the efficient frontier. There is an organization's risk that the portfolio focus too heavily on maximizing the return, losing sight of its true requirements, which is to return value, it becomes very easy to move to the regime where the organizations and therefore the portfolio manager becomes focused on cost and loses sight of value, undermining the return achieved. Effective portfolio financial management is a key part of maximizing return in this model. Portfolio financial management includes the activities involved in identifying the portfolio's financial resources and resources, determining inputs into the ideation process, establishing the overall budget of the portfolio, integrating the budget of the portfolio components, securing approval of financial changes of ongoing components through governance and monitoring and controlling costs through the durations of the portfolio. It's rest on five pillars. Five pillars is portfolio financial frameworks, portfolio financial management plan, portfolio components cost estimation, portfolio budget, and financial management effort. Portfolio financial frameworks specifies the system and method of coordinating available funding determin determining constraints and specifying how funds are allocated in order to align the use of financial resources with strategic goals and priorities. Portfolio financial management plan, a component of the value management framework that documents the portfolio financial aspect, funding schedules and milestones, initial budget, contract payment, and schedules financial reporting activities and mechanism, including external reporting obligation, example, statutory, and the financial metrics. The portfolio financial management plan may also be referenced from the portfolio management plan. Portfolio components cost estimation used to determine a bottom-up budget compilations for the portfolio. Portfolio budget established by compiling all available financial information and listing all funding and payment schedule in sufficient detail so that the portfolio cost can be tracked as part of the portfolio budget baseline. Financial management effort once the portfolio achieve initial funding and begin paying for components expenses and financial management effort moves into tracking, monitoring and controlling the portfolio's fund and expenditures together with the financial measures related to the expected benefits. Paragraph 7.7, .7, Assuring Value. The purpose of the value assurance is to ensure that the portfolio can realize the negotiated required value reflected in the plan for execution for the components of the portfolio. Value is an aggregation of the output from its components. Project produce deliverables. For example, the online registrations and account management system for membership application process. Programs deliver benefits in the hotel lo 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 loyalty scheme. For instance, a program might redefine the membership application process and membership level. The benefits could include simplified administration and improved management information for targeted marketing.
the underlying premises is that if the portfolio component successfully build its assigned deliverables, it can make its contribution to the chain that link the deliverables to components outcome to benefits to value all the way to the organization's mission as shown in figure 7-2. The diagram show how the portfolio value will be undermined if components produce deliverables that fail to enable the target changes. The value assurance aim to mitigate the risk. The benefits of the program are typically realized as each component's project finishes. With some expectation, exception, example, early benefits realization, the benefits of each individual project appears only after the project finishes, while figure 7 does to show a cycle activity at any point can be continuous. For example, the organizations may continuously develop and refine new strategies. If the organization is disrupted, then it can develop a response by intervening at which whichever point is the most appropriate. Figure 7 does to the link between strategy and portfolio performance via components deliverables. So from portfolio performance, it will go to organizational goals. And from organizational goals, it will go to strategies. And from strategies, it will go to overall portfolio design. So from portfolio performance, it will go also to overall portfolio design. And from portfolio design, going to the design and executions of portfolio components. And from design and execution of portfolio components, it will go to deliverables. And from deliverables, it will go to realized value. And from realized value, it will return to portfolio performance. Value assurance is concerned with ensuring that the deliverables remain aligned with the requirements of the overall portfolio design, enables the intended beneficial changes, appropriate factor and risk. So this is the figure 7-2 link between the strategy and portfolio performance via components deliverables. The portfolio manager inherits a set of principles and constraint related to the approach to value assurance adapt those for the natures of the portfolio and then communicates them to the components. Although the result of the value assurance are addressed at the portfolio level on the continuing basis, value assurance is enacted at a detailed level within its components, appropriately considering risk at all level from the components to overall portfolio. Referring back to the loyalty program example in section 7 industry appointee, its component contributes to one or more deliverables, each of which contributes to the achievement of the expected value. The contribution runs from specific components deliverables via the outcomes that those deliverables enable to have benefits. In this case, a change in membership number to realize value, which is the numbers of members for its components in progress. The key, the key is to ensure on a continual basis that the components will provide the anticipated deliverables. There are four approach to accomplish this, where the portfolio manager requires action by the components, while details related to them can be found in order to PMI standard. They are touched on briefly here.
to illustrate the portfolio manager's interest requirements tracing acceptance criteria gated review and quality assurance requirements tracing the portfolio manager should require that its components relate its requirements to its constituent work package and require reporting on the result to provide early and continual confirmation that the components will address its assigned scope with the appropriate level of risk response activity consistent with the organization's risk appetite acceptance criteria Every requirements need one or more acceptance criteria. Acceptance criteria are not the same as completion criteria. Completion criteria define when the task is finished. Acceptance criteria describe when work on the task can stop. For example, there are there may be a task for which the completion criterion is planned, agreed upon. In this case, the acceptance criterion defines the natures of the agreement. Reported agreement of the acceptance criteria provides a portfolio manager with an indication of component risk. When acceptance criteria cannot be readily agreed upon, this suggests that there are some fundamental disagreements in the component stakeholder community that risk undermining the component's contribution to the portfolio expected return. Gate reviews. Gate reviews at various defined points. The work within the components should be reviewed and evidence provided of the satisfactions or not of requirements, together with confirmations of the work still required to meet the requirements. The reported result of gated review provide the portfolio manager with an indication that the components is on course to meet its required scope. The key here is to get the right numbers of gates in the right place in the compo component's life cycle where the appropriate cost of change comprehension factored into the risk equation. Quality assurance. Quality assurance, the previous three concepts described helps underpin a robust quality management regime, but that needs to be supported in return by effective quality assurance to ensure compliance. Quality assurance provides a key value-related risk indicator to the portfolio manager who should have significant input into shaping it for the need of the portfolio. Paragraph 7.8, Realizing Value. Portfolio managers should be responsible for ensuring that the overall portfolio realize its negotiated required value. Therefore, they need to ensure that the components conceiving output from other components in the portfolio exploit those output effectively and deliver the targeted benefits so that the portfolio expected value continues to align with the requirements. It should be noted that Accountability for ensuring that the overall portfolio realize its required value lies with the sponsor of the portfolio. For example, an organization might set out to increase its profitability by consolidating its real estate. It could choose to start down that path by ensuring that individual members of the staff no longer rely, rely on access to the specific desktop PC at a specific desk and instead use a laptop or access a virtual desktop. To do this, it could, it could task one component in the related portfolio with developing the virtual desktop solution. In this case, the intent behind value realization would be that those parts of the organization targeted to use the laptop and virtual desktop would actually do so and do so in the manner 
that would allow for the retirement of individually dedicated desktop computers in the anticipated numbers and with no adverse impact on the organization's operation. Successful realizations of value is essentially concerned with management of change in the target components, ensuring that the required chains around the components are identified, planned, and executed effectively. The term management of chains is used in this context to refer to people-centric chains aimed to driving and in embedding chains in response to the output of the portfolio. This is instinct from the chain's management task that portfolio program and the project managers carry out as they navigate the executions of planning and delivery. Realization takes place in the service components of the portfolio. The program and project components are about enabling, enablement. The expected value of components can change as portfolio components are planned, developed, and executed. Changes in actual scope, schedule, cost, and performance can affect the expected value. External factors such as market condition, competitors' actions, law and regulations, risk realized, and other factors can also affect whether the expected value at delivery of the product services or assets created or enhanced has changed. Risk management and risk impact also contribute to the, to the final value of the portfolio. As executed at the portfolio unfold, the portfolio manager can update the forecast of the portfolio's value and maintain that forecast over time. In light of progress and changes in the environment, using the same technique that were used initially to estimate. In Figure 7, that's the value realization chain. So, I will read. The overall improvement in value will be driven by the actual investment and the actual value realized. So, from the value, Outcome probability distribution and the outcome probability distribution. Outcome probability distribution, outcome probability distribution. So value, moving a portfolio forward requires investment. The investment decreases the immediate value of the portfolio. Delivery performance and external factor will influence the actual investment consumes versus plan. Outcome probability distribution. Service components change and begin to deliver the benefits enables by the outcomes of the portfolio programs and projects. The benefits allow value to be realized. The effectiveness of management of change in the service components plus external factor will influence the actual value realized by the source plan. So from initial value, a sacrifice to create it will go to components investment from components investment which should enable to it will go to service value realization and from service value realization it will leading to it will go to improve value so from initial value it will go to components investment it will go to service value realization and it will go to improve value so this is the value realization chain Portfolio value or performance is an aggregation of the value of the portfolio components plus synergy effect. An effect that occurs from having an optimal mix of resources aligned to the portfolio components. Figure 7 industry shows how investment degrades the value of the portfolio. The amount of investment may be fixed. But change control and the consumption of risk budget may allow for some variation in the actual investment. 
value realization and enhance the overall value of the portfolio. Although there is a target to achieve, variation is likely. Therefore, the overall impact of the value realization chain should be to enhance the value of the portfolio through likely by an amount other than the anticipated target. Paragraph 7.9, measuring value. The value management frameworks define how value will be measured for the portfolio. See section 7.4. Recognizing that reporting value is essentially an act of organizational politics. The key in measuring performance are compliance with the agreed upon value measurement frameworks. Effective stakeholder buy-in and transparency in execution within program components value is usually defined by the benefits that the program yields, making benefits realization analyze an important technique as executable components such as program and project beginning begin to deliver. It becomes possible to start making immediately measures of the benefits of those deliverables. The portfolio managers should require appropriate measurement approach approaches to be in place of the components that are impacted by the deliverables and have them report on a continual basis progress in realizing the benefits against the plan. 7.10 Reporting Value Portfolio value reporting will provide information about the performance and forecasted of the portfolio. These reports also include identifications of variances, analysis of variances, and recommendations for corrective action or optimization. Its portfolio components will actively track its delivered value and will forecast value risk tolerance and the current assessed risk level. Reporting will address a number of topics, each more political than its predecessor, including but not limited to the following risk reporting, cost required to achieve required portfolio outcomes, reasons of any shift in those costs, cost synergy achieved between portfolio components, value achieved by the portfolio, Reason for any shift in value. Risk reporting. This includes the risk status and probable impact on the portfolio value should it occur. Cost required to achieve required portfolio outcomes. This cost should be an objective fact. Reasons for any shift. In those costs, there may be some objective fact in the mix, but in many organizations, it may be difficult to establish a universally agreed upon view as to the reason for the shift. Cost synergy achieved between portfolio components. Synergies can be positive, reduce the cost, or negative, increase the cost. In any case, their identifications and reporting is likely to be entirely objectives. The invest divest decision process is likely to result in an amalgamation of leadership, intuitions along with the empirical data where sunk costs and resources used across various portfolio components may result a net cost saving across the entire portfolio or across multiple portfolio. Value achieved by the portfolio. This is unlikely to be entirely objective. This section has explained how environmental complexity can undermine isolating the impact of the portfolio from other factor. Stakeholders buy in for the value measurement frameworks and consistent. The transparent execution help achieve consensus. Reasons for any shift in value. There, these are unlikely to be objective. 
service performance is squeezed both by the performance of the program designed to enable increased value and by changes in the environment, including organizational strategy, none of which can be controlled. This is the end of the recording. We will proceed to Chapter 8, Risk Management. So this is from page 72 to 95 of the Portfolio Management Processes. This is the continuations of Standard for Portfolio Management, 